there. Welcome to the final NTV of 1993. And the first of 1994. I'm Sharon Bennett. And I'm Mark Sullivan, Director of Energy Management Services at Seattle City Light. We're at the Mercer and Yale apartment complex, representative of the type of new construction that's taking place in our service territory these days. That's right, Sharon. And this mixed-use multifamily complex is a participant in our Super Good Sense program, a conservation plan for new construction. Energy efficient windows, extra insulation, efficient appliances, and a lighting upgrade will save enough energy in this 73 unit building to meet the electrical needs of another 20 Super Good Sense apartment units. And over the life of this building, electric bills should be reduced by over a quarter million dollars. We'll be hearing more about Super Good Sense and other conservation news during the rest of this show. But first, we'll take a look at some of the vital work performed upon our power system by electrician constructors. From installing equipment in substations to keeping spill gates operating, electrician constructors keep the hardware of our power system in working order. They take on both construction jobs and highly technical tasks, working in confined spaces and in close proximity to energized equipment. Recently, at Cedar Falls Dam, a crew of electrician constructors tested spill gates and cleaned debris out from behind the dam. This is a challenging job made easier this year thanks to low water conditions. Constructor crews do a wide variety of work. Well, we're also, uh, as you see up on the deck there, they are changing the oil and greasing all the, uh, the bearings up there. And uh, then we'll also have to go through the full operation of gate to test the upper limits which is to make sure that everything is working right. Constructors are responsible for doing wiring on large expansions to our system, such as adding electrical service to a new wing at Swedish Hospital. The benefits for me are the people I work with. I have uh, a great crew that I'm on and uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to stay together for a while longer. The, as far as the job itself goes, it's always different and uh, it's usually always rewarding. Electrician constructors aren't often in the limelight, but they provide an essential service for City Lights customers, maintaining and upgrading major components of the electrical system. You know, Sharon, we could really see how low the water is behind Cedar Falls Dam back in November. Right, Mark. And you know, we couldn't ask for better weather to film a winter issue of NTV. But although things appear dry right now, water conditions for City Lights hydro system are really in better condition than they were about a year ago at this very same time. Ross Reservoir refilled in July of 1993 and is currently 70 percent full, about where it should be for this time of year. Power management staff will be monitoring the situation closely and will keep you advised of snowpack updates. You know, Sharon, one of the best things about NTV is that it gives us a chance to see what other folks in the utility are doing, things that we may not have known about. That's right, Mark, and we'd like to hear from others who might have stories to share about their work unit or activities they're working on that might be appropriate for a story on NTV. You can give me a call at 684-3008, and we'll talk about it and see if we can put it on a future issue. And Mark, I understand the Energy Management Services Division recently made news in a little bit of a different way. That's right. We made an incentive payment to the Boeing Company to fund energy efficient improvements at their new spares distribution center out near the airport. And that was covered on BTV. BTV is the Boeing Company's corporate news video. Why don't we take a look and see how that was covered for Boeing employees. At Boeing, people often think of new technology in aerospace terms. But the new spares distribution center at SeaTac is using technology to save electricity and money. This huge new building is illuminated by 3,002 energy-efficient lighting fixtures. Two 565-ton high-efficiency chillers provide temperature control. Installation of the Frugal Energy System, which also includes 10 premium-efficiency motors, brought the company a check for over $355,000 from Seattle City Light. In the design, we looked very closely at opportunities to reduce operating costs and be a better neighbor. In that regard, we were able to re significantly reduce our future cost of power, and which resulted in this check. It's a situation that benefits Boeing, the power company, the community, and the environment. The energy that Boeing won't have to use, because they have energy-efficient fixtures, 
in facilities here is energy that we can sell to other new customers and expanding customers without building new power plants so we're going to save everybody in our service territory money at the same time that we're helping our largest customer range remain competitive boeing's investment in this technology will save over a million and a quarter kilowatt hours of electricity yearly that good news story was also shown on local television and the potential for more conservation savings is enormous with the construction of many new large apartments in Seattle. And although this is kind of an upscale locale, fully 30% of the buildings participating in the Super Good Sense program are for low-income residents. Super Good Sense has the goal of energy efficiency and comfort in mind. To avoid this kind of discomfort, we've probably all felt. Getting colder, freezing, and Arctica. Now you're warm again, warm, warm, warmer, hot, you're on fire. Oops, cooling down again, Iceberg City. Searching for a more comfortable home? Maybe you should consider a super good sense home. To guarantee efficiency and comfort, each project is inspected to ensure that all conservation measures are in place before incentive funding is provided. Since these new buildings will be around for 50 to 60 years, it's vital to incorporate energy efficiency up front. Well, my job is to meet with the developers and owners of these buildings prior to construction and talk about the energy efficiencies that will be built into the project. Typically, I work with the architect during the design of the project to see if these energy conservation measures fit in with the building. I think if employees have any questions about this program or if they, they're renting any units in the service area, then they could call our energy conservation hotline to get a list of the buildings in our area that have been built to the Super Good Sense standard. Now that winter is finally here, some power outages are going to be inevitable. That's right. We need only think back a couple of months to the Denny Regrade outage. Or back a year to the big inaugural day storm to remember how popular portable generators are becoming with our customers. And with customer and crew safety in mind, City Light offered a series of generator safety workshops to inform customers of safe installation of generators and warn of the danger of back feed. Technical metering manager Dave Smith says it's not just a customer service. We're increasingly seeing generators on our system uh, after a power outage. Uh, customers are using portable generators to uh, provide themselves emergency power. Uh, in the event of a, uh, an outage. Uh, and if they're not hooked up properly, uh, a portable generator can be uh, uh, a dangerous item for the line workers out on the, out on the line. Uh, if they are, are hooked up but directly to house wiring, there's a potential for back feed, uh, and uh, we don't want anybody to get hurt. So we're out here talking with customers uh, and in cooperation with the Honda, trying to get out the word as far as electrical safety. The Generator Safety Series was co-sponsored by radio station KVI and the Honda Company and provided a public service while reinforcing the safety of customers and of our workers. As we welcome in 1994, it's hard to believe we're almost in the last half of the last decade of the 20th century. I can top that, Sharon. It's not just the end of the century we're looking at, it's the end of the millennium. Does that mean time flies when we're having fun? That's right. The last thousand years have just zipped by. All of that is to introduce the innovation City Light is making in the fast-paced area of computer technology. Although not everyone at City Light has access to a personal computer, the utility now has a number of interconnected local area networks known as a backbone, connecting PC users at numerous locations. Another innovation is known as the CLAMS system, City Light's automated meter system. Knowing the age, location, and accurate reporting status of the utility's 360,000 meters is helping us move into the modern era of information tracking and accurate records and away from 36,000 index cards that had been used previously to track this information. And of urgent importance this time of year is the storm database system. When the trouble center is activated during major outages, customer calls generate thousands of trouble tickets. The new system pre-sorts them according to areas of the city for more accurate dispatching of spotters and crews. The storm database tracks repairs and will provide analysis of information. 
share on that storm database was activated for the very first time during the brief November snowstorm, and it's ready to go again at a moment's notice. Exactly, and those are just a couple of the upgrades included in the utilities information technology plan. We'll be hearing more about it over the next couple of months. And as we come to the end of this edition of NTV, it's time to congratulate a couple of really special groups of City Light employees. A salute to this year's outstanding high voltage performers and the J.D. Ross Award winners is coming right up. So from this super good sense building site near Lake Union, I'm Mark Sullivan. And I'm Karen Bennett for Network on Television.